applications of geometric sequences. So you'll remember a geometric sequence is where each term is multiplied by a common ratio to get the next term. Geometric sequences don't graph a straight line, they graph a curve, increasing or decreasing. We're mostly focusing at the moment on percentage change and compound interest, which is of course still percentage change. A geometric sequence starts at 200 and each term is 10% less than the previous term. So previously when we've looked at a percentage, it's been a percentage of the starting value, but this is a 10% less than the previous term. So if we just wrote this pattern, 200, 10% of 200 is 20, so 200 take away 20 is 180. 10% of 180 is 18. So 180 take away 18 is 162. And that would keep going. So you'll see it's not taking away a fixed amount. It does have a common ratio. If we checked the common ratio, remember our common ratio is T2 over T1. So 180 over 200. Let's just check that. Oops. 0 0.9. And we could also check that for the next one if you wanted. T3 over T2. 162 over 180. We don't have to do this every time. I'm just showing you we've got a common ratio. 0 0.9. So you can see that this percentage reduction pattern has a common ratio and if you're feeling very clever you'll notice that 10% less than, amount, than an amount if I had 100% minus 10% I'd get 90% and 90% as a decimal is 0 0.9. So the common ratio of a percentage change can be calculated by 1 plus or minus the percentage as a decimal. I'll write that down. So for increase Now we'll use capital R to mean the multiplying factor, that is the common ratio. We used to use little r, we use capital R now and because little r is the percentage change. Percentage increase is 1 plus the percentage change over 100 to get it to a decimal decrease the common ratio is 1 minus the percentage change on 100. So I'm just going to put a label for little r, percentage change. And just like we've been doing, um, over and over again, our pattern can simply be that V0 is the starting term and each term can be the common ratio multiplied by the previous term. So there's a bunch of information in there, but none of it should be new to us. We should have done this part here when we did compound interest last year. And this is just reducing by a percentage instead of increasing. Speaking of compound interest, we have to be able to do that. Now compound interest 
we're used to using the compound interest formula. The amount equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate on 100 to the power of the number of time periods. See that there? That's R. That's your common ratio. We just looked at it. We're used to that formula, but we need to be able to write compound interest as a recurrence relationship because it's really just a percentage change every time period. So you'll remember that we've got A, P, R and N. That is the amount in the bank account. This is the principal. This is the percentage per time period. And this is the number of time periods. Oh, I don't know why the pink, I, why did I decide to use pink? Sorry, because I just wanted to remind you that this exists, that we've learned how to use that formula. A recurrence relationship though, we'll need to have a rule for that. V0 is our starting amount, so that's our principal. And this exact formula here, because compound interest is just percentage change, Vn plus 1 is V or R times Vn and R, our rate of ch our ratio, our common ratio, is 1 plus the interest rate over 100. It's exactly the same as percentage increase or decrease, compound interest is percentage increase. So a recurrence relationship for this, I'll put this in a little pink box so you can see that that's my important bit for compound interest. V0 is our principal of $2,000. Vn plus 1 is our common ratio. Now 7.5% per annum. This will be 1 plus 7.5 over 100. Use your calculator. 1, 1 plus, use a fraction if you want, 7.5 over 100. 1.075 times Vn. That's it. That's our recurrence relationship for compound interest using the basic knowledge that we have. Find the value of the investment after four years. We're just going to need to multiply by 1.075 four times. And if we're feeling very, very clever, we'd know that we could raise that to the power of four. That's why this formula works. The starting amount multiplied by the common ratio to the power of the number of years we've got. 2000, hit enter, times 1.075. Year one, year two, year three, year four. That's it. Or, of course, you could have used a power. So, percentage change using a common ratio. We'll use capital R for that. Percentage increase is 1 plus the interest rate on 100. Percentage decrease is 1 minus the interest rate on 100. Our starting term is V0, value at before the first year or before the first time period. Recurrence relationship is the common ratio but times a term before it. The only thing we really need to remember apart from that with compound interest is that the interest rate and the time periods have to match. That is, if our interest rate is per annum, our time periods need to be counted in years. We do sometimes get the problem where we compound monthly or quarterly. And you have to take that into an account. 
It's actually not a bad idea always go to go back to our old way of setting out compound interest from year 10. In our problem, our principal was 2000, our interest rate was 7.5% per annum, but that was per annum. I want per month, so I divide by 12, but then I have to do the opposite here. It was four years, but to get the number of months in four years, I times by 12. So I've got 48 months, and you might as well just leave this as 7.5 over 12, because you're going to have to, otherwise you'd have to round. So when it's monthly or quarterly or whatever compounding, you've got to change the number of time periods and the interest rate both into months or quarters or whatever it was. So then V0 would still be 2000, but then Vn plus 1 would be Vn times R. And to get my R, that's 1 plus the interest rate on 100. So that's going to be a much trickier calculation there. 1 plus 7.5 divided by 12 divided by 100. 1.00625. Don't go rounding. Of course, you could have put that the other way around. I just could be very careful to make that a time sign. So that's your new recurrence relationship when it's compounding monthly. Now, obviously, I don't want to do that recurrence method for 48 months. But 2,000 times 1.00625, we'd have to multiply by 1.00625 48 times. So, you think times it by 1, times it by 2, times it, like, like, times it again and again and again. You can just do to the power of 48 and you'll get your answer. 2000 times 1.00625, oops, to the power of 48. I didn't want a square root. And I need a new calculator. 2697.1.20. So, this is a bit of a, a curveball question, but we do need to be able to deal with monthly compounding for our recurrence relationships.